In today's video, we are going to look into this great utility method in Laravel called tap. We are going to talk about two different kinds of tap methods, one for objects and one for collections. Let's begin with objects. The tap helper method allows you to perform operations on an object within a callback function. I know it doesn't sound that cool, but it's not until you see it in action that you start to understand how useful it can be. Let me show you a couple of examples. Let's say, for example, that we want to update a user's email and then send them a welcome message. This code is perfectly acceptable, but look what happens when we use tab. The tab method accepts two parameters. First one is a value, any value. In this case, we are passing the user model returned by the find method. Second parameter is a closure, and this closure always receives the value we used in the first parameter. Now we can update the email and then save. Notice that I'm not returning anything inside this closure. This is because the return is always the value that we passed as the first parameter, along with any modifications we made inside the closure. And you might be thinking, well, that's just the same code written in a different way. And you'd be totally right. In this scenario, it boils down to preference. But here's another example that might change your mind. If you don't use a closure as a second parameter, you can then call any method on that value. And the return of that method will always be the value itself. As you may know, the update method always returns an integer but we are forcing it to return the user model instead by wrapping that user model with the tab method. Pretty cool, right? Okay, now let's talk about the tab method for collections. It does essentially the same thing, but with two key differences. One, you chain the tab method in a collection instance. This in turn passes the collection to the closure method at that point in time. And two, the return of the tab's closure is always the original collection without any modifications, which means that you can interact with the items in the collection without modifying the collection itself. Here, let me show you. Here we have a collection of unsorted numbers. Then we call tab on that collection and receive it in this closure. Then we sort it and return the first item. If you're not familiar with the shift method, it removes and returns the first item in the collection, modifying the collection in the process. In this case, the return value is one. Since tab returns the original collection, we can then call shift again, and the return value will be four because the values are still unsorted and the collection was not changed. Oh, and one more thing. You can make any class tappable by simply using the tappable trait, allowing you to call the tap method directly without using the tap helper method. Okay, that's all for now. As always, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to the channel as well. See you in the next one.